Muy buenos días, tengan todos ustedes, mi nombre es Balam. Hoy voy a darles la bienvenida a este lugar. Good morning everybody, my name is Balam and I'm gonna give you the welcome to this place. Antes que entren a conocer el trabajo de mis hermanos, voy a darles dos regalos. Uno, el copal, la resina de un árbol, para poder alejar todas las malas energías a tu alrededor. Before you start walking around, to see what my brothers and sisters are making for you, I'm gonna share with you two gifts. The first one is copal. This is resin sap of the trees of this area. They are working with this to take away the negative energies and you can use it to clean your aura, okay? El segundo, agua de cenote sagrado. Pero no es un cenote donde se bañan las personas, no. Es un lugar donde solo nosotros podemos entrar a buscar esta agua bajo la luz de la luna llena. The second gift I have for you is water from a sacred well. No where people is swimming. It's a hidden secret place on the ground. Only shamans like himself go to the place under the light of the full moon to bring the water for the community. Especialmente para limpiar y purificar los cristales de obsidian. They use the water to take away the negative energy from the obsidian. Y también para limpiar y purificar a las personas si así me lo permite el día de hoy. And if you believe and you love me, we can use this to take away your negative energies, to make a cleanse, you know? Si alguien de ustedes logra obtener cualquiera de uno de estos elementos que tengo en la mesa. If somebody has the opportunity of taking home for you, for someone else, one of the items that my people is making for you. Depende de la necesidad de la familia o de la persona, puede ser especialmente para la salud. Remember that all of them have different meanings. It depends on what you need, what you're looking for. There's something for health. Para lo que es la ritual. Just put the hands this way. Esto no es nada negro, no es eh, nada malo, nada negro. Es simplemente conexión con la naturaleza. This has nothing to do with black magic, religion, neither sorcery. It's just yourself making connection with Mother Earth. Okay? Thanks to everybody. Gracias a todo el mundo. Vamos a seguir en el chichen itcha. Este es el de Okay, so remember, <laughs> we're gonna be walking around one hour, then there's gonna be free time, okay? Mm. Now, the name of the city for my young words Chi Chen Itz Ha. It means at the mouth of the natural well of the magicians of water. At the mouth of the natural well of the magicians of water, okay? No chicken pizza. <laughs> Vamos. This is Chichen Itza, one of the seven wonders of the world, of the modern time. You're excited. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Yes, that's right. Okay, so, the building you're looking at was constructed 1,000 years after Christ. 30 meters high over 100 feet but that's not Chichen Itza Chichen Itza used to be the name of the city mm. not the name of the building that's the temple of Cuculcan or the name that was given by the conquistadores El Castillo how many did it? mathematics and astronomy pay attention at the end there's gonna be a test <laughs> can you see the tree right here with the spikes? Mm -hmm. That's a sacred tree for the Mayans. They call it Seiba. 
Save as the tree of life. So that's the way Mayans imagine the connection with the universe. Look, metaphorically speaking, the tree will have 13 branches connecting Father Cosmos, nine roots connecting Mother Earth. 13 plus 9, 22. Sunrise, 23. Sunset, 24. Like 24 hours a day. So mm. Mayans believe once you die, soul goes inside the tree. It goes all the way down and goes back to the place where the sun rises again. So we're talking about life after death. Okay? Come this way. Let's go. Vamonos. Let's see. Clap at the same time, okay? And three. One, two, three, and quick clap. One, two, three. One, two, three. Last one. One, two, three. So, what happens here? Unfortunately, somebody woke up and said, for me, sounds like the Quetzal. Quetzal is an endemic bird from Guatemala. Like mm. the bird of paradise. Small body, long, colorful uh, uh, feathers on the tail. We've been talking about vibration all the time. The vibration produced by the, by the Quetzal is not the same what you heard right here. It's different. Result is not a Quetzal, okay? Sounds like a bird, but that's a mythical bird. Mayans believe that when you die, one bird goes with your soul all the way Mother Earth, all the way Father Cosmos. So they created the sound on the four stairways 1,000 years ago. That's what we call today refraction of the sound. I mean, when you clap, sound is bouncing on every single step. It goes all the way to the top. The facade of the main temple on top is not straight. Upper part is angled forward this way. Sound with a higher tonality. Now, we have the stairway, platforms right, right and left. On every platform, there's gonna be three sunken rectangles on the relief. The ones that are incomplete at the bottom. You see them? Three on your left, three on the right. Every single platform. Last one on top, two and two, okay? You see them? Yes. Okay, don't forget numbers. Let's take a look to the ball court. Come this way. It's windy, it's noisy. Try to listen. Yeah. Sound is bouncing. Yep. Why? The walls are not straight. Both of them on top will be angled inside this way four degrees. 
Oh. Now, here, there was a game. Mayan ball game. Two teams. One team there, one team over there. Seven players per team. Six of them right here. On the main platform, just the team leader. Ball was made of rubber. Resin, sap from the trees. It was kind of heavy, two kilos, two kilos and a half, four or five pounds. Because of the material, it bounced. Now, you're gonna hit the ball with shoulders, elbows, hips, and knees. That's it. No way your hands, head, neither feet. So you hit the ball, you give it back to the team leader. He's gonna hit it again with the same body parts, but this time to make it pass through the ring over there. Piece of cake. <laughs> Once you score, game is over. At the end of the game, one team leader is gonna be beheaded. Oh. Which one? The winner. Winner. You wanna please the gods, you need to offer the best. You wanna get something from them, give them the best. They give you nothing. I know what you're thinking. I don't care. Don't wanna score, don't wanna lose my head. <laughs> now you're gonna understand why the national soccer team is never gonna win the World Cup. Yeah? <laughs> Dying this way was the greatest honor, the highest privilege. You will join the gods for all eternity. But if you lost, you're alive. But that means that you were rejected by the gods. That's a shame, you know? That's a disgrace. Now, the spectators used to be on top of the building watching the game. Behind you, that's a place for musicians, dancers. Up, the chamber where the team leader was beheaded. Private ceremony. That's why the access is protected by the columns representing upside down snakes. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And over there, that's the VIP area. Shaman, governor, and tour guides, of course, okay? <laughs> Shaman. Seven players on your left seven players on your right. In between them, there is a circle representing the ball for playing the game. Inside, there is a human skull on profile. Mouth is opened. Something's coming out from the mouth. And it goes Father Cosmos and Mother Earth. Equilibrium. Captain on his knees over there, wearing different body protectors. At the bottom, He's wearing sandals. Nike, by the way. <laughs> Team leader has been already beheaded. There is no blood. Seven snakes coming out from the neck. And only one looks like a corn plant, maize, that fertilizes Mother Earth, life and death, equilibrium again. Finally, there is another team leader still standing. Right hand, there is a double sharp knife. Right there, left hand is grabbing this way, captain's head. Eye, nose, mouth, and blood is still dripping from the neck. Mm. Somebody was beheaded. Come this way. See you. Every solstice, every equinox, when the season changes. How long? We have no idea. We were conquered by the Spanish, they destroyed the evidence. Only warriors were able to play the game, and everybody chosen by the shaman. Remember, the shaman representing gods on earth. Chichen Itza was a big city, 28 square kilometers, 50,000 inhabitants, 600 buildings, all of them painted red, green, blue, white, and yellow. What it was black on the wall, that's the stucco from that time. So, Based on radio carbon dating, but it was black, used to be blue. Can you mind the walls painted in blue? Now, all the buildings you're looking at have been already restored, not reconstructed. Restoration implies archaeologists will be able to use only original stones from that time. I mean, they cannot go to the quarries of the area to get a stone, carve it, paint it, and put it right here. 
They do, they change chronological and historical value of the place. You see the numbers over there? That's part of the restoration process. When the place is falling apart, archaeologists come here, write the numbers so everybody's known, they them off from the building, put them on the grass, they prepare mortar like concrete, and based on the numbers, they put them back one by one to avoid any kind of mistake. Okay? Great on this building. Skulls. Mayans were conquered three times. Toltecs, Aztecs, and Spanish. Mm. When Toltecs conquered any other city, they used to choose the warriors' enemies that survived the war. And those enemies were beheaded on top of a platform this way. So their heads were exhibited on a piece of wood, one on top of another. That's what you see over there to demonstrate how powerful you are. Nevertheless, today we know Mayans were not beheaded here. Toltecs were very smart. They said, let's keep them alive so they can be working for us. Let's pretend we can be friends. One day believe in us, we're gonna charge double taxes. If they don't pay, their head is gonna be here. Does it sound familiar to you? <laughs> so, Mayans were conquered, not only physically, but mentally speaking as well. But when we talk about Aztecs, that's another story. Look at the difference. Mayans history, 4,000 years. Aztecs, 600, that's it. We are 24 hours far away from Mexico City by driving, 1,800 kilometers. In only 400 years, Aztecs conquered from Mexico City all the way down to this place, even part of Guatemala, in 400 years. So they were considered the strongest because they were the bloodiest, the most savage. They never showed mercy against the enemy. I am Aztec. <laughs> so you better be on time. <laughs> Vamos. Okay, look. The pyramid is like this. 50 years ago, archaeologists discovered there is another building underneath, inside this one. Older and smaller. We are not Egyptians. Nobody's buried. No secret uh, corridors, no mummies, no treasures, no UFOs. 12 years ago, Mexican astronomers, Mexican archaeologists, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México was here. And they discovered there's a third one. And that's it. So it means three different Mayan tribes inhabited the same area, but in a different timeline. Now, señoritas, what does it look like that's what women love. Diamond. Diamonds. What happens if we have lots of them this way? Making a straight line. What kind of animal does it look like? Snake. Snake. Why? In this area, there's 45 different kind of snakes. Ooh. Only 45. Like that one, but bigger. <laughs> and that's the main one. Diamond back rattle snake. Rattle snake. Uh -huh. Because for the Mayans, it's Kukulkan. For the Aztecs, Quetzalcoatl, the main god. Now, tell me, what happens to the snake once a year? Shed skin. Shed, shed skin. So Mayans believe we should be like the snake. When one cycle, project, relationship has been over or completed, change it. Shed the skin. Wow. Or change your couple once a year. <laughs> Now, don't feel offended. I told you this morning, open your mind. Not all what is written on history books is for real. Spaniards never saw, the, never saw the splendor of the city. It's common sense. The city was abandoned middle of the 1300s. Spaniards came here late 1500s. Mm. What is for real, they saw Mayans making sacrifices in Tulum. And then they moved here, and they found the city almost totally abandoned, but still decorated with the snakes. 
all the buildings decorated with the signs. Because that's the main god, Kukulkan. But tell me, who's representing the snake on the Holy Bible for the Catholic people? El Diablo. Oh, Diablo. So can you imagine 500 years ago, Franciscan monks standing where you are right now, surrounded by the Mayans at night? <laughs> they were scared to death. Oh my God. <laughs> These people is crazy. They are making sacrifice because they are worshiping El Diablo. What are we gonna do? Our job. Let's save their soul. Okay, wait. They don't understand what we say. Oops. Okay, let's kill them all. That's what they did. So history was sold. 1500 the time we were conquered. Mm -mm. It's the time of the biggest genocide in the American continent. I told you, don't feel offended. I never said Spaniards fault, religion, monks are guilty. Nobody's guilty, it's a historical process. What is a shame that 500 years later we are the same, we behave the same way, we think the same way. Yes, we have an iPhone 48, we don't know how to use it, but we have it, because that's fashion. Think about values today, think about the people that you know. What are the values today? The car you're driving, your Rolex, your iPhone, the brand of your clothes, the size of your house, the school where your children are attending, how many plastic money you have on your, on your wallet. And that's why uh, there was a problem 500 years ago. For the Mayans, the snake was an square concept, a god. And the Spaniards came here with different ideas and they said, no, 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 you're crazy, not a god. It's El Diablo, <laughs> another square concept. So if there's no equilibrium, history is gonna be repeated over and over and over again. Now, you're gonna see women walking around wearing a long white dress, embroidered on the chest, on the back, and the shoulders. If you cut the dress by the lateral sides and you open it, all the embroidered area is gonna be like this. Like a cross? Mm. That's your chest, your back, your shoulders. What is gonna be women's head? Center. So, the design of the Mayan women is representing women are and must be considered the center of the universe. Mm. <laughs> 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 Any question? I remember when I got divorced. Let's go, vamos. Doorway, under the stairway. That's how the archaeologists discovered there is a second building. They were digging out, and they saw there is one stairway right here, and they found another one right here, the one that belongs to the second building. So they made a tunnel all the way to the top to the chamber of the second structure. On the main temple, two carvings remain. One representing the god of sacrifices, another one is like a throne, jaguar shape, you know, painted in red, encrusted with pieces of jade. It's a vibration of stone in Canada, Guatemala, green color most of the times. Now, can you see the huge snakeheads over there? Mm. Representing Kukulkan. There's two of them because always Mayans were talking about equilibrium, balance. Don't forget, the lateral side of the stairway where the doorway is, something amazing happens over there. Twice a year, the pyramid lights up with the sun over there. During the equinox, March 21st, September 22nd. What happens? I have the picture, but that's for the end, okay? Come this behind the trees. There's hundreds and hundreds of round pillars. You see them? Yeah. That's the complex of the 1,000 pillars. And all of them were for supporting the weight of a stone roof, which is gone with the pass of time. According to the historians, the place was used as a market. Straight ahead, different architecture. Because we have square columns representing the four elements of life. Fire, water, 
air and wind. On top, can you see the, the two columns on top? Yeah. Once again, the snakes upside down. Rocks on top, snakes, snake at the bottom. Even mouth is wide open. And the carving, reclining position in between them, that's the God of Sacrifices. The name, Chakmul. So, that means sacrifices were performed over there by the ball game as well. Don't believe Mel Gibson's movie Apocalypse. The heads were not rolling down the stairs as you see in the movie. It's uh -huh. Hollywood. No human sacrifices on the pillar. That's a spiritual building, not for killing people. Mayans constructed a temple. 52 years later, they constructed a new one on top. Oh. And the same way every 52 years. Why? We have lunar calendar, 260 days, intertwined with a solar calendar, 365. So these are like wheels spin around. They match right here. 52 years later, they will come back to the same position. Oh. Venus, Sun, Moon, and Earth line up every 52 years. And every 52 years, there's gonna be a total solar eclipse. The last time that all of this happened, 2012. Oh. So 2012 was not the end of the world. <laughs> it was the end of all the cycles at the beginning of a new one. The pyramid is like this. Four stairways. 91 steps on every stairway. 91 times 4, 364. Earth motion around the sun. Plus the platform on top, 365. Solar calendar. There's nine platforms representing nine routes on the way to Mother Earth. On every platform, there's three sunken rectangles. On the first eight, eight times three, 24. 24 hours a day. Plus two on top, 26. Plus 26 again, 52. 52. On the corners, we have a 45 degrees angle. The sun is gonna be here, March 21st, September 22nd, equinox. By the afternoon, sun lines up with the pyramid and we have a 45 degrees angle again. Here is the stairway, remember? When the sun is coming down, sunlight reaches the end, the corner, of every single platform projecting this way on the lateral side of the stairway triangles of light and shade at the end looks like a diamond bar rattle snake profile with a huge snake head at the bottom and you know what is crazy diamond bar rattle snake in this area in a lifetime, shed the skin 13 times. Oh. When it dies, we'll have 13 rattles. Numbers. I'm gonna show you how it looks like. Stay where you are. Mm -hmm. The body and the head. The body and the head. It still does that to the uh -huh. Every March 21st, every September 22nd. You see? The body and the head at the bottom. March 21st? March 21st, September 22nd. It's divided. Light and shape. The snake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles on light. 
One, two, three, four, five, six on shell. Seven plus six, 13. 13 branches on the way to Father Cosmos. So we have found all the numbers we've been talking about on the same building. And that's what Mayans did 1,000 years ago. No Google Earth, no telescopes, no GPS, no computers, no technology, the one we have today. So that's amazing, isn't it? Guess what? All what you have heard about the pyramids so far, honestly, you could have a stay at home, you know? Reading a good book, watching History Discovery Channel. But you say, no, 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 no. I want to go to Mexico. I want to see this by myself. So, why are you here? Look. Earth, True North, and Magnetic North. That's new for the Mayans. They didn't know about this. All what they were able to do, to look at the sun through the obsidian, the way you did it, remember? But after years, they understood. In one year, the sun will have four perfect cycles. Sun motion, repeated, four times a year. Sun motion on the first solstice, on the first equinox, on the second solstice, on the second equinox. And then we had the basement for constructing the pyramid. Mm. Now, how many seasons? How many weeks per season? Thirteen. 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 How many stairways? Thirteen. Four. 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 Thirteen times four? 52, 52. Yeah. So what you're looking at is considered the biggest and the most accurate solar calendar constructed in the American continent. Based on the position of the sun on relation with the stairway, Mayans knew when the season changes. Harvest, planting, raining, dry season, you know? But there is more. Remember what is cenote, am I right? Sinkhole. One cenote on the north. One cenote on the south. Cenote is a natural formation process. It's not man-made. And there's at least over 7,000 of them in the Yucatan Peninsula. Jeez. Where you're gonna be swimming today is a baby. 24, 26,000 years old. That's it. The oldest one, two million years. Between Tulum, Playa del Carmen. 14 years ago, Mexican archaeastronomers discovered there's another cenote underneath oh. the three pyramids. Wow. They are not only lined up, they are still connected by oh. the same underground river. Wow. Now, everything is about astronomy. You take a look to the sky tonight, you will find three stars making the same alignment or formation. What's the name? Orion's Belt. This is crazy. Mexican astronomers discovered that only once every 52 years, Orion's Belt is gonna be above the city. So that night, every star matches in a perfect way with the location of the three cenotes. So for these people, that's the time when Mother Earth and Father Cosmos becomes one. There's a perfect equilibrium on the planet. When you believe on energy, this is what we call a vortex of energy. So that's the reason why Chichen Itza is one of the new seven wonders. Mm. The snake, that's what you can learn with other people. So, Mayas were not crazy. It's not impossible. No cenotes, but every civilization has solar uh, markers, you know? Machu Picchu, Incas, Peru. Oh. Egyptian pyramids. Oh. Stonehenge, England. Teotihuacan, Mexico City. And many other places around the world. All of them perfectly lined up with Orion's belt. Why? We don't know.
Next time you come back, I will have the answer. <laughs> so, señores, that's what I wanted to share with you. A different perspective. Okay? I hope you can like it. Thanks for being working around with me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Gracias.